All right. Welcome, everybody, to a two-hour edition of Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. Just had to sort things out here, considering that my co-host is not here. And I had to get these windows updated, situated, taken care of. So here we go. Here we go. All right. Just had to take care of some things real quick. All right. Here we go. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a special two-hour edition of Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. You're listening to us on itmiradio.com. I go by the name of Kenny C. No need to adjust anything. Normally, we start the show at 8 o'clock. But since my co-host Jeff is not here, he is at a business trip. I decided to take his 7 o'clock time slot for tonight only. And for the second time in the history of this show, we're going two hours long. Um, we got a lot to go over, and we got plenty of interviews in store for tonight. We're going to recap Impact Smackdown against all odds. Um... Monday Night Raw this past Monday, and also the big news concerning next year's WrestleMania and the status of Wendy Orton. We're going to get to all that momentarily. Plus, I have not one, not two, not three, but four interviews scheduled for tonight. I spent the last couple of days trying to get the extra interviews in, and... I've gotten word for all four women. They are all confirmed for tonight. My first guest calling in at 715 will be Burgundy from United Wrestling Federation. She was part of the Vixen show this past Sunday. She's from my neck of the woods in Frankfurt. So shout out to Burgundy. She's going to be calling in in about uh, 13 minutes for now. Then at 7.30, OVW's Kayla Marie Stroh, who made her UWF debut this past Sunday. And she will be calling in, talking about OVW. She's going to talk about UWF, talk about what else is going on. She's going to call in. And I had this next uh, guest on last month, and I'm bringing her back. Primetime Amy Lee will be calling in. Talking about WSU's five-year anniversary. She's calling in at 7.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then my final guest will call in in the second hour, Amazing Maria. She calls in at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So now that I got all of that out of the way, I want to get to the big news from WWE. And I start off... With WrestleMania 29. There was a press conference the other day. Between John Cena. The Rock. And WWE's COO Triple H. Confirming that WrestleMania 29 will take place on April the 7th, 2013. That's why April 7th, 2013. It will be WrestleMania 29, first time ever, I believe, in East Rutherford, New Jersey, inside the MetLife Stadium, home of the New York Football Jets and the Super Bowl champions, New York Football Giants. First time, I believe, New Jersey is hosting a Super Bowl. So now that you think about it, New Jersey and New York are going to be hosting the next two WrestleManias. Because if you, if I recall, WrestleMania 1 was in New York City, Madison Square Garden. WrestleMania 10, WrestleMania 20. So it's every 10th of, of the year, there's a WrestleMania in Madison Square Garden. So New Jersey and New York got the next two WrestleManias covered starting 2013. 
Uh, so you can go to WWE.com, check out the photos of the press conference. Uh, and I guess John Cena and The Rock were casual, well-behaved, not taking shots at each other. I don't know. I really didn't see video of it. But um, it's time to get on to this year's WrestleMania, which will be in Miami, Florida, Sunlight Stadium, April Fool's Day. I can't believe WWE is not mentioning that it's on April Fool's Day. They're just saying it's on April 1st, which we all know is April Fool's Day. So, um, there's that story for you. Oh, and this next story here, if I can get to it, Randy Orton suffered a concussion, according to WWE doctors. That concussion came when he hit, when he actually got hit in the head with the championship belt by World Heavyweight Champion Daniel Bryan. It is a concussion, and he is ruled out of the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view on Sunday. He is out. He is done. This is a tough 2012 for Randy Orton. He already missed a month because of a uh, herniated disc. And now he has to miss the pay-per-view before WrestleMania because of a concussion. As far as I'm concerned, WWE is doing the right thing. Keep him out. Keep one of your big stars ready for uh, WrestleMania. And it's not like I think Randy Owens is going to win the World Heavyweight Championship anyway. But having Randy Owens would have kept the interest level in that World Heavyweight Championship. Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. So, it's now official. Santil Morella, former Intercontinental Tag Team Champion, current assistant of Teddy Long will be replacing Randy Orton. He's going to be joining the great Kali, Cody Rhodes, uh, Ray Barrett, Big Show, and World Heavyweight Champion Daniel Bryan. Now, I thought they would have at least switched things up with the storyline considering that Mark Henry is suspended. I thought they would have just put him, put the suspension to the side. I mean, Mark Henry was originally scheduled to be in the uh, Warrior one, uh, in the Elimination Chamber, but then he got into the face of Teddy Long, and Teddy Long pretty much not only he wore him out of the chamber, but he's indefinitely suspended. I mean, I understand you got to get someone to replace Randy Orton. But I would have preferred Mark Henry over Santina Moella. Santina Moella. Inside the Elimination Chamber. You got to be kidding me. That's, uh, that's a bit crazy if you ask me. Um, and I'm going to get to more WWE and TNA talk a little bit later throughout the show. This past Sunday, I attended the United Wrestling Federation's second annual Vicious Vixen show. It was at the Georgetown Bingo Hall at Georgetown, Kentucky. Now, I've been living in Kentucky for most of one third of my life. And, of course, I'm a diehard wrestling fan, first and foremost. And before I go any further, I want to shout out to Rocketman, to... Uh, uh, what's it? Uh, Shamoopy Dumplings, Snuggly Dumplings, and Snookum Face. To the people not named Rocket Man, if you don't like the username, just click your name on the right side of the chat room. You can change your name to whatever it is you want. Uh, just thought I'd let you know. If you are a first time listener of uh, Triple Threat Wrestling Radio, and if so, welcome to the show. And welcome to itmiradio.com. Uh, so, yes, if you want to change your name, click your name on the right side of the uh, of the chat room. And you can change your name to whatever. Real name, nickname, nickname, whatever it is you want. So, as I was saying, I was at the UWF Vixus Vixen Show. And it was a lot of fun. Shout out to all the lady competitors. 
that were there. I um, Some of them I've already met before, like Mary Elizabeth Monroe and Jesse Bell Smothers. I did a video interview with Jesse Bell Smothers. It's on YouTube right now. If you like, go to youtube.com backslash user backslash TTW radio. You can check it out. Uh, I upload it just hours after the show and had a great time. And Jesse Bell, who used to live in Kentucky, who used to compete in UWF, now lives in Florida. But she came all the way from Florida to Kentucky to be a part of this historic show. Now, in the history of Kentucky wrestling, there's never been an all-woman wrestling show until last year. And they were known as United Wrestling Alliance once upon a time. They were the first wrestling organization in Kentucky to pull this off. So shout out to Felony Fox. Shout out to Dale Bass. Shout out to everybody of United Wrestling Federation for giving these female wrestlers the spotlight. All from Ohio to Indiana to Kentucky all came through and represented. There were three females from Ohio Valley Wrestling Umbrella. and They came through and represent. Epiphany was there. Uh, Kayla Marie Stroh was there. And Alita Ortiz, the Latin Beast, was there. Speaking of Alita, I'm going to be interviewing her on the show next Thursday night when we return back to our regular start time at 8 p.m. Eastern. Also, Mary Elizabeth Moreau, Jesse Bell Smothers, Burgundy was there, uh, Nurse uh, Nutty Nancy, that's her name, Nutty Nancy was there, Little Naughty was in attendance as well. Um... You can go to United Wrestling Federation Facebook fan page. I'm not sure if they have put, posted the results of the show. For those who miss it, I don't even know if they're going to have it out on DVD or not. But even if they did, you most likely have to go to their shows and purchase the DVD that way. Because I don't think you're gonna they're going to be having it online or something like that. So if you want to check it out, if you want to get the DVD... You're most likely going to have to go to their shows in Georgetown, Kentucky. Uh, but I don't know if and when they're going to have a DVD of Vix's Vixen Volume 2. Uh, but go to United Wrestling Federation on Facebook and like their fan page. They keep you posted on what's going on. My first guest, Burgundy, is about to call in. Let me go ahead and add her to the conference here. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so happy and I'm so excited to be joined with a female from my neck of the woods. She is a wrestler from United Wrestling Federation. She was part of the historic Vixen show this past Sunday. I am joined with my neighbor, Burgundy, right here, right now. Hello, Burgundy. Hello, Kimmy. How are you doing? I'm doing real good, and uh, thank you so much for being on the show tonight. Oh, thank you for asking. My my uh, neighbor, my Frankfurt neighbor, good talking to you. Uh, it was great meeting you this past Sunday night. It was like my first time seeing you since I came back to uh, Kentucky last month. And uh, And let me ask you this. Now that we're a few days removed from this historic Vixen show, how did, and you did suffer an injury when you had your match against uh, Nutty Nancy, uh, how's the uh, the ankle? Well, um, I actually didn't hurt my ankle. It was actually my knee that I hurt. So I'm actually currently resting. Um, I'm going to take a couple weeks off. I'm not going to be able to do any wrestling or anything. So just basically resting a lot of ice, trying to stretch it, trying to keep it from getting stiff. Well, I certainly uh, wish you a uh, speedy recovery, uh, especially just in time for March the 10th because you're going to be a part of the MLW tapings. You're making your MLW uh, debut, as a matter of fact. Uh, how do you feel about that? I'm super excited about going to do MLW on March 10th. I'm, I'm really excited about meeting a lot of new people, um, learning a lot of different things from the other women that are going to be there as well. I can't wait. 
Uh, for those who may not know, MLW is a custom wrestling website. It's uh, it's like being a fan. You get to decide who faces who, what the match is going to be, what the stipulation is going to be. Pretty much, if you ever wanted to book a match, this is your chance. This is your opportunity. And Burgundy is going to be one of the many, many faces that's going to be included in the March tapings in a couple of weeks. So go to MLWonline.com. And for more info, uh, so Burgundy, what got you into wrestling? Well, I've always been interested in wrestling. I've watched it ever since I was little growing up. Um, I actually, whenever I graduated high school and everything, I kind of moved away and got away from everybody. I um, kind of started, you know, family like everybody else does. And I really did not know that indie wrestling was around. And I moved back to Frankfurt. Um, met up with some people whom I call friends now, and they actually introduced me to indie wrestling. And as soon as I was introduced to the fact that indie wrestling was around, I, I knew I had to do it. That is what I wanted to do. What made you join the United Wrestling Federation? Well, um, I had heard a lot of reviews about um, Felony Fox and Big Dog Kojo, and um, I had heard from several people that if you want to be trained properly, that's the place to go. So I contacted Felony Fox, and a year later, I actually got to wrestle for the Vicious Six or so. All right. So um, how does it feel to be part of an all-woman wrestling show? I mean, that's that's big considering that Kentucky, that there has never been a all-woman wrestling show until last year and now this year. But how does it feel to be a part of that show? Oh, I was extremely honored to get the chance to wrestle um, the Vicious Vixens show this year. Um, it was it was unbelievable. Last year, you know, I got to partake. I rest a couple matches for the show, and then this year, just being able to wrestle um, on the show, it it was a, it was oh my goodness, it was unbelievable. I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun, and I have a lot of respect for all the ladies that were on the show, as well as Felony and Cujo. All right, and uh, for those uh, who wants to see Burgundy, uh, you can catch her, United Wrestling Federation, Sundays, I think around 6.30 p.m., um, and you get to see her and alongside with the rest of the UF, UWF stars and the Vixens. And uh, go check the check it out if you're definitely in the Georgetown, Kentucky areas. It's a lot of fun. I've been a fan of UWF for over a year now, and uh, and it's a it's a lot of great stuff, and it's a great wrestling to be around. Check it out. 150 Edwards Avenue is the address. You can go to UWF's Facebook fan page. That's United Wrestling Federation uh, for more info. So after the buzz that the Vix's Vision shows has been getting, and uh, I was talking a little bit about it before you got on, uh, do you know by any chance that this show is going to be coming out on DVD? By, uh, do you know it's coming out on DVD? Um, from what I understand, they are going to release um, this year's show on DVD. Of course, you know it's going to take some time to do the editing and put it together, but yes, it is definitely going to be released on DVD. Excellent. So, uh, again, go to United Wrestling Federation Facebook fan page. They will keep you posted on that. Again, I am joined with Burgundy for United Wrestling Federation right here on Triple Threat Wrestling Radio, two-hour edition. Now, uh, who are your favorite wrestlers growing up? Oh, my goodness. I have such a long list. Um. I, I remember watching Undertaker. I remember watching um, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, Owen Hart. I mean, the list just goes on and on. Now that you mentioned The Undertaker, there's a lot going on with him, considering he's pretty much at the end of his career. And I think we all know that there's a chance he and Triple H will be facing each other one more time at WrestleMania. Uh, do you think that 
you being an Undertaker fan, do you think that this year's WrestleMania is this going to be his last? I I honestly think it is, but do you think it is? Nope. Just got right to the point. Uh, I I I I don't know. I mean, what's left for the man to prove? He's a future Hall of Famer. Um, but I guess if he wants to keep going, he he keep going. Um. I saw uh, someone posted a pay a uh, posted a link on your Facebook wall earlier today. Uh, it was like an interview, I believe. Lady Sports. Uh, how did that go? Oh, that was great. I had a lot of time fun doing that. Um, I mean, I wrestled for PGWA. I was in under a year and had the honor of being able to work uh, work a show for them. And I mean, it's just it's so much fun and. I got the opportunity to sit down and do an interview, and I just, you know, I really enjoyed it. And it's an inside look to me as well, so. Oh, right. So uh, are there any other wrestling organizations you work for other than UWF at the moment? Um, I currently work for um, ATW, which is All Pro Wrestling for Miss Delphia Richard Dollar. Um, let's see. I mean, there, there's a bunch of them, but right now my uh, my main my main two that I focus with is of course UWF in Georgetown and APW and that's in Shepherdsville, Kentucky. So once you and I'm starting to oh go ahead. Uh, I'm actually starting to do um to work for NWF as well. Oh, yeah, I heard of them, Northern Wrestling Federation. They do shows in Ohio and Kentucky. I've been to one of their shows last year, so it's some good stuff as well. Um, so once you do recover from your injury, uh, do you have your eyes set for that Vixens Championship? I do, but I have one opponent, opponent that I have a score to settle with first. Oh, it's Nurse uh, Nutty Nancy. Yeah, you gotta you gotta take care of her. You know? <laughs> uh, so, what was your thoughts of the Vixen show overall? There's a lot of uh, great responses from it. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, but what's your thoughts on the show overall this past Sunday? It was a great show. All of us ladies had a great time doing the show, being able to participate. Um, I just hope that the fans enjoyed it as much as we did. Well, as a fan myself, I certainly enjoy it, and I highly recommend to all those that's living in Georgetown or near the Georgetown area, go check it out. It is on every Sundays, 6.30 is the bell time. Uh, check it out, Cujo, Frank the Tank, Felony Fox, Burgundy, once she recovers, uh, Amazing Maria, the list goes on and on, so... Uh, I highly recommend you people check it out if you're near the Georgetown area. Um, if you can have a dream match against any opponent, male or female, uh, what would it be? Who would your uh, dream opponent uh, be? Oh, my goodness. That's a hard one. There's so many girls out there that I would love to have a match with. Um, that would be really hard to pick just one. Okay, um, well, well, let me ask you this. Uh, how do you feel about the Divas and the Knockouts? Unfortunately, I'm not a real big fan. Of neither or just one? Of either one. All right. <laughs> she just got right to the point there. That's, that's good. Um, now, Burgundy, before I let you go, um, I ask our guests to do this. It's like a station ID, it's a voice drop. All you have to do is say your name, and what right after you say your name, you say you are listening to Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. I will count to three. You go ahead and say it. All right. Uh, one, two, three. My name is Burgundy, and you're listening to Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time, Burgundy. It is great talking to you. It's great to talk to someone from my neck of the woods that's out there representing and 
and, and performing to the best of her ability. Um, thank you so much for your time, and uh, I definitely will be going to UWF more often. I mean, I already have, but I will is uh, especially considering you're going to be there. Uh, thank you for your time, uh, Burgundy. Best of success goes out to you. You have a speedy recovery. Get your revenge on uh, Nurse Nancy, uh, Nutty Nance, uh, whatever she calls herself. But just have a speedy recovery, and uh, best of success goes out to you. Well, thank you, Kenny, and you have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you more often. All right. You have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye. That was UWF's Burgundy just called in great talking to her I noticed people in the chat room may have having some problems you know with the audio I don't know what it is well apparently I'm sounding fine on my end I guess that matters the most I guess coming up is my second interview of the night. I'll be joining with OVW's Kayla Marie Stroh. She's from Ohio Valley Wrestling. Uh, she does a lot of stuff for other wrestling organizations. Uh, she is a diehard MMA fan. And um, she's, she's got a lot going on. So uh, she's another person I met in person at the Vixen show this past Sunday. So I'm looking forward into interviewing her this coming uh, matter of moments. And also later on tonight, I will recap Raw, Impact, SmackDown, Against All Arts, and uh, many more. Uh, so definitely keep you posted. Stay tuned. You are listening to Triple Threat Western Radio 2-Hour Edition. Right here on itmiradio.com. Kayla Marie Stroh will be my second guest. She will be calling in uh, in about three minutes. Uh, so, yeah, I talked about WrestleMania. I talked about Randy Owens' injury. We'll get into all, more on that a little bit later. Also coming up on the show, I have WSU's Amy Lee, primetime Amy Lee. She'll be calling in. And I also have uh, Amazing Maria calling in at 8.30 p.m. And we have a Wookie Kins just joining us in the chat room. Hello, Wookie Kins. If you're a first-time listener, welcome to Triple Threat Western Radio. And welcome to itmiradio.com. If you don't like that name, just press your name. Or at least click on your name on the right side of the chat room. And um, you can change your name to whatever it is you want. Well, yeah, you can actually change it. Yeah, you can change your name. Uh, so if that's what you want to do, you go right ahead. But nonetheless, welcome to Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. I'm getting ready to interview Kayla Marie Stroh. She should be calling in uh, momentarily. Uh, I'm going to definitely ask her about Ohio Valley Wrestling and United Wrestling Federation. She made her UWF debut against Amazing Maria. She was at the Battle Royal as well had a lot of fun interacting with the ladies it was a great show and uh you heard from burgundy there will be a, a dvd uh so but there is no word on when is it coming out but uh if it is going to be released you have to be at georgetown to see it to purchase the dvd i should say uh, Kayla Marie Stroh will be calling in momentarily. Uh, we're going to get into, we got a, so much to talk about. This is only the second time in the history of this show that I've gone two hours. The last time I did two hours was on Thanksgiving Eve last year. And I had four interviews on that show. And I went four for four. I hope I go another perfect four for four on here. That's the key word. I'm hoping. A walking man still joining me. Uh, if you can hear me, walking man, please press a one. Cause I noticed people have been refreshing, getting in and out. My second guest is calling in. Let me add her to the call. 
Ladies and gentlemen, my second guest at this time, coming to you from Louisville, Kentucky. You know her from Ohio Valley Wrestling. And she made her UWF debut this past Sunday. I'm joined with Kayla Marie Stroh. She's joining me right now. Good evening, Kayla. Hi, Kenny. How are you? I'm doing real good. Uh, it was great meeting you this past Sunday. And thank you for being on the show. Same to you. I'm glad you stopped by the signature booth. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. So, uh, Kayla, why don't you go ahead, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and how did your wrestling career got started? Well, I've been a wrestling fan since I was about 10 or 11. Um, I've always been familiar with OVW. Uh, being from Kentucky, um, growing up, my mom would always take my sisters and I to all the summer events uh, over at Six Flags. So I've always just been in love with Ohio Valley Wrestling, and I've always known that's where I wanted to go to learn how to wrestle. I uh, started wrestling back in June of last summer, and um, I've just been training ever since. Um, Sunday at UWF was my third match, so I'm just now starting out, so uh, not a lot of people know who I am yet, but I'm just trying to work hard and keep keep getting better and doing more events. Now, uh, what was it like to make your UWF debut especially considering you made your debut on an all-woman wrestling show. What was the experience like? It was a great experience. Um, just starting out, I'm, I'm still new, so I have a lot to learn. Uh, all the girls there, just they're really helpful. Felony Fox, I really appreciate her inviting me onto the card. It was a great learning, learning experience. All the fans there are so nice. Um, so I was really happy and pleased with the event. You not only you competed in the Battle Royal, but you also had a one-on-one -on -one match against Amazing Maria. And uh, for those who may not have seen the match, and uh, I know I did, uh, talk a little bit about that match you had with Maria. Well, um it was a lethal lotto, so no one knew who was wrestling who until uh, they called your name and you had to make your entrance into the ring. So I had no idea I was going to end up wrestling Maria. Um, I got out there. We started wrestling. It was, it was a good match. We, we were both on point. Um, I got her a little bit. She got me a little bit. Uh, she tried to pull me. She put me in a stunner. I kicked out because... That's what I do. You know, I wasn't wasn't out. I was still in the game. Um, he keep shot at me a little bit, and uh, the ref was turned, so she used the ropes to pin me. So uh, I'm not too pleased with her cheating to get the win, so I'm hoping I'll have a chance to uh, avenge myself and get some revenge and uh, get a W next time. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you ain't backing down, that's for sure. And uh, I'm sure... No. And I'm sure we'll definitely have that rematch between you and Maria at some point. Um, now that you had your match, are you officially part of UWF now, or that's just a one-time thing? Um, I'm not with UWF at all. Um, I'm I'm with OVW, but um, getting experience everywhere, that's something I hope for. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting any ring experience I can right now since I'm pretty new uh, but OVW is my home but I would love to do another UWF event another Vicious Vixens event I had a great experience and a great time and they're wonderful people so let's talk Ohio Valley Wrestling and for those who may not know what Ohio Valley Wrestling is shame on you uh, <laughs> they have helped build careers of some of your favorite superstars that you've seen in WWE and TNA, and they used to be the developmental system for WWE. Now they're the developmental system for TNA, and since you do work uh, for TN, uh, for OVW, how, how do you feel about the relationship between OVW and uh, Impact? I'm really excited about it. it. It brings many opportunities, not just for 
uh, people in TNA to come here and learn. It also brings many, many, many doors and opportunities for the people already here uh, training to get noticed and uh, get a possible contract with TNA. Uh, right now we have a few people from TNA here uh, training and wrestling. Uh, Matt Barella, uh, Anna Pia, uh, Jesse Goddard, and Rob Terry. And it's just really awesome to see uh, more fans come in because of the TNA deal. Um, everyone's really excited about it. And it brings back memories to me uh, growing up, being around when uh, WWE was affiliated with OVW. It just it brought a, a different level of events and connections with fans and wrestlers. So I'm really excited about it. So even though TNA and OVW have joined forces, yet still WWE start still to this day looking for talent. Like, for example, from what I've heard, Marcus Anthony has just signed a developmental deal with the WWE, even though they have a relationship with TNA now. Uh, how do you feel about that? I'm really excited for Marcus. I think he really deserves it. Uh, yeah, a lot of people were confused about that. Um, I think just because TNA is, um, this is the dev developmental territory for TNA now, that you can't be signed from WWE or Ring of Honor or any other promotion. And that's not true. Um, right now, it's TNA chose OVW to be the developmental territory, but it also it also still leaves room for other promotions like WWE to also come in and find talent. Still, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't mean that everyone in OVW is only going to be going to TNA. It just makes it an even bigger possibility for people here to also get. Uh, signed and looked at by every top promotion in the country and in the world. So it's a it's not just TNA, it's everyone, really. I definitely agree, because at the end of the day, Ohio Valley Wrestling is a hot commodity. No matter what yeah. organization it may be, when they want to look for talent, they go to OVW. And uh, I'm happy for Marcus Anthony. Congrats to him. I actually watched his match last month when he teamed up with Jesse, took on OMG, and yes. um, he pulled off that 450 splash. I'm like, oh my goodness! <laughs> that's I the, thought the roof, I thought the the building was going to collapse after that. That's the first time I've seen a black man did a 450 splash <laughs> ever in. Now he's he's so big, so not not everybody thinks. Oh, he's. A big man like that can't do all kinds of acrobatic moves, but he can do he he's his move set is incredible. Um, if people watch out for what he what he does, it's it's insane. I hope uh, when he's down at FCW, he has plenty of opportunities to show the fans down there what he can do as well. Why don't you go ahead and tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you, Facebook and uh, Twitter and Twitter. Well, I'm on Facebook and Twitter. On, on Facebook, it's under Kayla, K-A-I-L-A, -A, Marie Stahl, S-T-O-L-L. -L. Um, I don't have a fan page or anything. I don't think I'm at any, at any um, level right now to have a fan page, but I have a personal page there you can add me at. And Twitter, I have a Twitter. It's Kayla, Killa, K-I-L-L-A, -L -L -A, uh, Marie. And I'm always on Twitter. I'm always on Facebook. So any, if anyone has any questions or wants to connect, I'm always, I'm always there. I want to talk about the Kayla Nation, especially that <laughs> the Twitter name Kayla Nation. Uh, <laughs> how did that came about? Well, my friend, uh, my friend Andrew, um, I. I have always planned. I don't have any finisher, any finishing moves yet because I just started out. But I kind of made up a, a name for a, a future finisher. Maybe it's called the Kalinator. So uh, my friend Andrew, he one day just made up this idea. Like you have the Kalinator. Why don't we just have the Kalination? So all your people, like your peeps, your your amigos. Um, that can that can be like a group that we call ourselves. So 
I had a couple of friends just make up this Twitter page. Uh, I guess it's kind of like a fan page only for Twitter um, that you can follow the Kayla Nation, just Kayla Nation. So I feel really honored to have something like that made up for me. That's it's good to see that uh, there's there's people out there rooting for you. They even put the Twitter name out there, so you know you gotta start somewhere. So just sh- shout out to the Kayla exactly. Nation. I'm proud to be a part of the Kayla Nation. So thank you very much. I'm proud to have you along. Yeah, at least at least you got a brother in there. I will say that. <laughs> at least you got a brother in there. So um, for more, Kayla Nation doesn't discriminate. No, not at all. That's that's good to know. Um, for for more info on Ohio Valley Wrestling, go to ovwrestling.com. Check out if they're gonna come to a city near you. Most likely, they are in the Ohio. Well, technically, the Kentucky and Indiana areas. So if yeah. you are anywhere near the Kentucky or Indiana area, you gotta check it out. It is excellent wrestling at its finest. Who knows? You may have seen Kayla in action. So go check out ovwrestling.com. And I want to ask you, my last question I want to ask you, because I live in Frankfurt, and I believe OVW will be coming to Frankfurt a week from this Friday. Are you yes, gonna, are yes. you Are you going to be there? I am planning on showing up, yes. Excellent. Hopefully you'll see me in action. Well, whatever the case, I, I will see you nonetheless. I will definitely be there. Uh, I'm glad to hear it, Kenny. All right. So uh, I also heard... Yeah, you're going to be um, doing some work with Ring of Honor uh, tomorrow in Cincinnati. Oh, yes. Uh, Ring of Honor is coming to Cincinnati, Ohio tomorrow night. Um, shame on me for not knowing the bell time, but um, I will be helping out the show, like security, ring setup, takedown. But I believe Mike Mondo will be wrestling. He's from OVW. Uh, Sean Casey will also be in action. And our referee, Chris Sharp, he's actually going to be refing tomorrow night as well. So there's tons of OVW people that are going to be there. So if you're around the Cincinnati area, definitely show up at the Taft Theater tomorrow. Definitely. Check it out. A wing of honor, just like uh, OVW, very talented group of wrestlers as well. Uh, You can check them out, wing of honor, Cincinnati tomorrow. Uh, before I let you go, Kayla, I ask all guests to do this. It's a station ID, it's a voice drop. All you have to do is say your name. And what after you say your name, you say you are listening to Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. I will count to three. You go ahead and say it. Uh, one, two, three. Hi, this is Kayla the Killer Marie, and you're listening to Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. Thank you so much for your time, Kayla. Best of success, and I'll see you next Friday. I appreciate everything, Kenny. See you next week. All right, bye-bye. Bye. That was Kayla Marie and my third guest, White right on Schedule. Prime Time <laughs> Amy Lee is back. What's going What's on? What's up, guys? Happy V-Day. <laughs> White right back at you. Uh <laughs> Thank you. Now, for those who may not know, I had you scheduled originally on March the 1st, but um, since I was doing the two-hour show, I asked Amy if she was willing to come back two weeks early. She said, go right ahead. And I know you did an interview with Hit the Ropes Radio yesterday, so you're quite busy promoting the uh, WSU five-year anniversary. But thank you so much for calling in two weeks early, and uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, thanks for having me back, guys. You guys were a lot of fun last time. Absolutely. So let's talk about this WSU five-year anniversary show. It's coming up on March the 3rd, um, and we talked a little bit about that last time, and I want to talk a little bit more about it. Uh, that's, I want to talk about a couple of matches, if you don't mind. Uh, okay. I want you to get your, your input on that. I want to start off with Marty Bell versus Tina San Antonio. These two ladies, very talented, former tag team champions of WSU, now bitter rivals. They're facing each other one-on-one for the first time ever in WSU. How do you feel about these former tag team, now bitter rivals competing at the uh, five-year anniversary show? Well, 
great late Dick Murdoch always told me, if you had a great with somebody, whether it's your mama, your daddy, your tag team partner, or your best friend in the locker room, settle it in the ring. When it comes to wrestling, just settle it in the ring. And Tina San Antonio actually issued the challenge to Marty Bell, had the gall at the last pay-per-view to issue the challenge after Marty Bell found out Tina San Antonio had lied about her injury um, that she was too busy trying to try out for WWE and blew off a booking with WSU, which worked, which aggravated me, ticked me off to no end because, you know, WSU is such a positive um, perspective of women's uh, wrestling, you know. It's not a bunch of chicks just, you know, with Botox and silicone and G-strings running around with, you know, with the big old boobies and everything. These are girls that are beautiful and talented and very intelligent and, you know, are very hungry to become part of the spotlight. And, I, you know, when you're chosen or you're, you, you're carrying a, a title for a promotion, you should hold it to the highest regard because that means the promoter, the management, the commissioner, and, and um, production, everyone thinks that you have what it takes to carry a title. And she basically blew it off for her WWE tryout. So she faked an injury and said, oh, somebody attacked me and put the heat on someone else. When, in fact, she lied, and I exposed her on that, because I don't like liars, okay? I have more respect if you say to somebody, listen, I ain't coming today. I got an opportunity once in a lifetime. I'm going to go for it. I think Marty Bell, the kind of person that I, I've known her to become and, and traveling on the roads down south with her, is a very understanding, compassionate person and would never hold anyone back. So Tina San Antonio is the biggest hypocrite I ever met in professional wrestling, and I've been around 22 years because – she blew Marty Bell off. She blew the tag, the tag team title defense off and, you know, and tried to put the heat on someone else that was totally innocent. So not only is she a hypocrite, she is a liar, a fake, and a poser. So I personally hope that Marty Bell kicks the living blonde out of her hair. I really do. I hope she snatches her bald because she deserves it. She totally disrespected not only Marty Bell, but the promoter of WSU and the promotion of WSU and the entire roster. She blew everyone off for a once-in-a-lifetime shot, which no one would ever hold her back, but she lied. And that's a no-no. You shouldn't lie. This is what I like to hear. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's right. I, let me tell you something. You ask it, I tell it. I, I pull no punches. That's, that is, <laughs> that's great to know. Uh, let's talk about the uh, – there's going to be not one, but two J-Cup qualifying matches that's going to be on the five-year anniversary show and one of the uh, one of the matches includes WSU Hall of Famer April Hunter. Uh, talk a little bit about the qualifying matches. Well, um, Athena's coming in from Texas. Um, the, the other girl she's wrestling is um, is uh, I, I really, and honestly, I won't lie to you. I don't know too too much about her, but I know Athena from working with her down in Texas and down in the Southern states. Because remember, I do more wrestling down south than I do in my own territory or north of me. I do more down south because that's where I was, you might say, born and bred in wrestling. So I met Athena. I like her. She's very um, enthusiastic, a very hard worker, gives a thousand percent, very respectful. She was taught properly. So, you know, this is an opportunity for Athena to show some old school ways in such a quick paced environment because. You know, as we all know, up here is a lot quicker than it is down south. They they don't move as quick. They're not, you know, they're not as quick on their feet. So, you know, Athena's going to have to step her game up. Now, the one that I'm really interested in is April Hunter against Annie Social. Because what a lot of people don't know is Annie Social trained under the PWU out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It was called the, um, the Pitbull Dojo which was Gary Wolf's wrestling school under the PWU banner. He and Cashmere owned it, Johnny Cashmere. And Trent Acid, the great late Trent Acid, and myself were trainers there. And, and Trent and I basically trained Annie. We, we had met her on some independent shows, and she has a lot of spunk and a lot of feist to her, and I like that about her, and so did Trent. So we invited her to come down, and you might say Trent and I are her wrestling parents, whereas April Hunter saw the same qualities as I did, and brought her on the road with her, took her under her wing, and became, you might say, like her auntie of wrestling, her aunt of wrestling, and actually got Annie booked overseas in Europe, in, in, in France, to wrestle. So um, Annie actually got to wrestle international because those barriers were broken by April Hunter. 
So it's kind of like um, teacher versus student type match. So that I'm very interested in because Annie won't back down from anyone. And April Hunter has a lot to prove, too, because people say, oh, April, you've been around, you've been injured, you know, you're now in the Hall of Fame, maybe it's time for you to hang it up, you're getting a little long in the tooth. And April's like, oh, I still got what it takes. And so they both have a lot to prove. Annie has to prove that she's not in the shadows of April Hunter anymore. And April Hunter has to prove that she's not ready for the geriatric chair of pro wrestling. So that one there is going to be a kick-ass match. I'm, I'm very much going to be sitting ringside watching that match. Again, this is the J-Cup qualifier. Gabby Gilbert taking on Athena and April Hunter versus Annie Social. I've interviewed. That's right. I have to apologize. Gabby Gilbert. She used to be called Roxy Cotton. That's why, because I'm so used to her being called Roxy Cotton. I've seen Roxy where she was just, you know, this girl that came in and used to get pummeled all the time and squashed the matches. And she's come a long way. And she actually now, I don't know if you know who he is, is Steve Carino. She's she's going under his tutelage. And mm -hmm. Steve Carino wrestled for many, many years over in Japan on the independent scenes over there. So, you know, she's learning some of the the uh, Japanese ways. So, um, I, I, again, I apologize, Gabby Gilbert, when you said that, I apologize. That's, that's uh, a formerly known as Roxy Cotton. She's another girl that's, that's really stepped up her game. So all four of these women in this, this qualifying match is, is going to be interesting because they all want to be, you know, number one, and, you know, not everybody can be number one. So I, I honestly think these four women are going to give not a 1,000 not 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 a hundred thousand, not a million, but a trillion billion billion percent. It's going to take every every ounce of energy, blood, sweat, and tear out of their body for these matches because they all have something to prove. Absolutely. Again, I'm joined with WSU's own Amy Lee. That's prime time. Amy Lee, the commissioner of WSU, promoting the five year anniversary show that's coming up on Saturday, March third. 2012 a little over two weeks away i'm mm -hmm. looking i have the poster right in front of me so i am knowing exactly what i'm talking about <laughs> just got i have to make sure i have to make sure no that's okay look <laughs> at me i'm the commissioner and i was like gabby gilbert i really don't know and then i was like ah, oh, blonde moment but you gotta understand 22 years of chair shots will do that to you yeah yeah i hear you <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be taking place in the nywc sportatorium over at 435 13 Brock Avenue, Deer Park, New York. The meeting greet is for 3 to 5. Hall of Fame is at 6. Bell time at 7. And uh, go to WSUWrestling.com for more info. And if you're unable to attend, you can watch it live on iPay-Per-View over at GoFightLive.tv. Uh, some other ladies are scheduled to compete. Uh, Jazz, Becky Bayless. Jennifer mm -hmm. Cruz, Violet, mm -hmm. Nikki Six, and the man diva, Rick Cat, uh, Catado. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The man diva. I'm just gonna call him the man diva. Everybody. He knows. is. He. I have to honestly say, out of all the women that's ever stepped through the doors of WSU, none of them compare to Rick. And I always tell Rick, Rick, no matter what, you will always be the queen diva of WSU. <laughs> And he goes, oh, Amy Lee, I know, because you know what? They can't walk in stilettos like I do. And I went, okay, Rick, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's go over a couple more matches. Sure. The WSU tag team titles are on the line. You got the Boston Shore, the uh, current tag team champions, taking on the Soul Sisters. <laughs> Jane, for some reason, the Soul Train inside me just popped out west in peace don nah, cornelius the great late don cornelius yes. man he was the best god bless his soul absolutely so the soul sisters jana and latasha who i've interviewed in the past she's a very nice chick and mm -hmm. uh they're going to be facing the uh the boston shore for the tag team go how do you feel about this matchup well actually the latest gossip i'm not one to gossip but you asked a question i will give you a truthful answer amber will not be appearing um, at the WSU five-year anniversary. She has taken a step back from pro wrestling due to personal matters. And, you know, Amber has always been a, a gracious girl and very positive. Um, but I think, honestly, to be, to be honest with you, I think it's an excuse because she's jealous that Lexus, 
you know, had an opportunity against Mercedes in the last 70 minutes, and then she worked Molina for a good 20 minutes on the last show. And, you know, kudos to Alexis because she actually held her own against Molina. And as I said last night, and I've said to other in, other, other um, uh, interviewers, uh, the main thing, like when Alexis got done wrestling Molina, she was very disappointed in herself. And I looked at her like she had four heads, and I said, are you crazy? I said, you've never met this woman. Um, you did not call the match, but inside the ring, so you did it old school style, I said, which a lot of people cannot do these days. I said, you never wrestled against her before, so you know nothing. You only know what you've seen on TV or on YouTube or whatever. I said, and you held your own, okay? The crowd was very satisfied in the match, and the fans are the most important people because they're the people that pay, that pay the, uh, the paychecks and pay the bills for this company. So I said, you did very well against that. I said, if I didn't think you could do it, I would not put my name on the line, and I would not jeopardize the, the reputation, the impeccable reputation of WSU to put just anybody there. You earn that you earn that spot, you came, you saw, and you conquered it the best you could, and that's all we ever ask of any of the girls, is to give the very best that they can when they get inside that ring. But um, Amber Amber was very resentful, very jealous in the locker room. I had seen tension last time, but I thought, eh, you know, well, all us women, you know, we PMS, we get some uh, m- miserable syndrome in us, and then we're all good after a chocolate bar and two might all. But in this case, Amber said she had personal issues and she wasn't going to attend. Um the one thing that WSU is doing that I personally don't like, but they've done it in the past, is when, and they actually did it uh, with Marty Bell and Tina San Antonio when Tina San Antonio got injured, is they allowed them, they allowed uh, the one half of the tag team to wrestle, and they were allowed to find an opponent, I mean a partner, to take this place off. Where I come from, if you're a tag team, you're a unit, you're one. So half Either you have an option, either forfeit the titles or the one person go against the other two people. Because if you're good enough to win that title, then you're good enough to defend it and hold on to it. If not, oh well. But WSU always gives that courtesy, and I think they try and be fair, whereas I'm a little bit, I'm actually the the, the bitch shocker uh, um, compared to WSU. I'm a little stricter and tougher on the girls because I've been in the ring and I, and I know what's expected uh, of me and, and, and all the other girls and of the roster. So, again, they're going to allow Lexus to pick a partner of her choice to come and help her defend the tag team titles. Now, like I said, I don't agree with that because her new supposedly partner did not win that title with her. What they should do is actually just, you know, either forfeit or have an interim like they do in UFC, have an interim champion, and then once the other half of the tag team can perform, then you know, wrestle, then, you know, let the interim go against the tag team um, champions, but they don't do it that way. They do it this way. They try and be nice and, you know, and all that. And I'm really, you know, not all for that. So that I do, uh, I am against, but, you know, they have final say. They pay the bills. So, you know, there it is there. So only one half of um, WSU uh, Tag Team Champions Boston Shore will be there, and that's Lexus. Amber will not be there. So uh, Lexus has found an opponent. As a matter of fact, as I said last night um, on an interview, I had called Lexus to find out if she found someone. She goes, oh, yeah, Emily, I got somebody. I'm like, okay, um, who is it? She goes, oh, don't worry, I got somebody. I'm like, uh, yeah, I need to know who it is. Oh, I'll let you know. Like, I'll let you know in time. No, Lexus, I need to know now. And she's like, I, I promise you'll know before the show. Lexus, I don't want to walk into the building that day and find out who your tag partner is. She's like, oh, no, 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 you'll know. You'll know, I promise. You'll know the week off. I do have that person. I'm just finalizing. I'm like, Lexus, if you don't have somebody, then either you defend it yourself or you you, you forfeit. So we'll see what happens. I don't know. should be interesting. Uh, she, it happens with everybody. They're just going to leave it as a surprise, probably going to wait to the show, and then the partner will show up. But uh, she better hope the partner show up because the Soul Sisters, they're not messing around. They want Oh, no, 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 they're not. And I'll tell you what, um, Latasha has been traveling over to Japan working, and um, she's also getting ready to go down to Mexico for a little bit to wrestle, you know. So uh, uh, Latasha's doing very well for herself. And Jana is a uh, lead trainer over at uh, Kevin Knight School up there in uh, Patterson, New Jersey. So she's doing very well for herself, too. She's right now working on her master's at, at uh at uh, NYU, so she um, she she's right now concentrating on school and 
you know, training people and things like that. And I'm very excited for her being um, honored uh, on the five-year anniversary because she's been with the company since day one, along with Cindy Rogers. And Cindy, I always thought Cindy deserved more credibility and respectability from the media than what she got. And when I mean media, I don't mean guys like you who have these shows and allow us to come on and speak. I'm talking about the magazines, the very prejudiced. If you don't fit a certain glam fam, they kind of like just – push you aside so i think it's very nice that wsu is honoring cindy rogers and Jana because they both have worked hard and been part of the wsu family since day one and i think it's very nice that they're acknowledging georgia the late georgia Macropolis in the hall of fame because she did a lot for getting women's wrestling out there with newsletters when they didn't have computers and things like that back in the the, the 60s 70s and, and you know 80s type thing so you know um kudos that they're honoring georgia and then um, Dixie Carter to bring it in, which I, I I have mixed emotions over because Dixie did a very good thing in the beginning with the women's division and having real women come out, all different size, shapes, color, creeds, ethnic backgrounds. And, you know, then you let the egomaniacs come in that have had their moment in the sun and now they're jealous because the girls are getting more more um, viewers and more hit time than, than the guys are. And they're actually at one time... If you look at the, if you look at the ratings, the women were carrying that company. You know, one woman mm-hmm. alone was really carrying that com, a, a, a thing, company, and that was Awesome Kong. So I thought that was absolutely tremendous that a big girl was carrying that company. People were tuning in every week to see her, and not so much the guys. I'm not knocking the guys; they work just as hard as the girls. But the girls got to work even harder because they do get put on a back burner and they do get bad, bad um, media coverage because of WWE and the divas. So. Um, you know, that my mix, I have mixed emotions. I liked what she had to do, ODB, Awesome Kong, Mickey Rocks, and all them. And then she started trying to be like WWE and, and have divas and, you know, and all that, glam fam and all that. And you really don't need that. You know, there's nothing wrong with the girls coming out looking presentable, looking nice or attractive or whatever. Right. But it, it shouldn't be focused so much on that. It should be more focused on the wrestling and their skills. So, you know, I have mixed emotions with Dixie Carter. All right, a couple other matches I want to discuss. Let's talk mm-hmm. about Leva Bates taking on Bone Saw Jesse Brooks. Um, that should be interesting. I, I, I um, I, I only saw them a couple of times, and um, I don't know. I, I, I believe the the two of them are actually from the New York area. So, and I, and I believe they trained with one another um, back in the back when they were first starting into wrestling. So I, it should be interesting, you know, because actually, you know, like these, these under, I, I call them undercar girls, you know, girls that are just really starting to, to, to get recognition in WSU because you have to earn your, your spot. Right. Um, so these two girls are going to really kick ass because, you know, they, they got to prove to management, they got to prove to their manager, they got to prove to the promoter, and they got to prove to me that they're worthy that you know they, that they're, they're they're willing to give it all to, to for the company and for the fans because remember, if you piss off a fan or you disappoint a fan, you're done. You're done. It's hard to win them back. It's very hard. Fans are funny. They like what they like. They don't like what they don't like. There's no in between. They either like you or they don't like you. It's not like oh well you know maybe this time I like her. Uh uh-uh, uh, it's black and white. There's no gray in between. So. These girls really have to win the crowd. They have to win the promoter. They have to win my respect. They have to win the locker room's respect. So they got a lot going for them, a lot of pressure on them. But, again, they would not be booked if they couldn't handle it. So we'll see. We'll S- see. Speaking of Lexis, and uh, sh- that's not the only match she's going to be a part of, the tag team title. She's got a one-on-one match as well. She's going up against the Radiant Run. Uh, talk about this matchup. Yeah, you know, like last pay-per-view, um, Amber and them came out, and they they, they did an attack, and, and Rain came out to make the save, and Lexus and her were mouthing one another, and we actually had to separate the two of them in the locker room, and, you know, Lexus almost lost her her position in wrestling Melina that night because of her mouth, and, you know, I basically just said, yo, I'm not having it, okay? I'm not kidding to care. I'm not a babysitter. Y'all are over 18. Y'all know the rules. You know you know how to be act like you were brought up, not drug up. And and I just said to Rain, you go over there, and I said, Alexis, you go in the other locker room, and I, you know, and then Lexis, 
I really had to put my foot in her ass because she kept coming over and agitating Rain. And then Rain wants to, you know, smack her. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You, you know better. Settle in, in the rain. And Rain, rain just kept saying, I want to match with her. I want to match with her. I want to match with her. And she kept dam- the demanding it between Sean and Mick McCaffrey, who's the promoter and owner of WSU, and myself. And, and everybody that works for WSU, she just kept saying, I want to match with her. I want to match with her. So be careful what you wish for. Now you have it. So we'll see. I, I think Lexus is uh, um, uh, hang in there. Um, it should be interesting, though, because um, there's some, some personal heat there between the two of them, so we'll see what happens. We got two more matches to go. Uh, the semi-main event, as I like to call it, it's going okay. is an uncensored rules tag team match as the team of <laughs> Brittany Savage and Alicia taking on two-thirds of the Midwest ladies, Sassy Steffi and Allison K. Uh, Midwest girls... They've been trying to take over WSU, so how do you feel about this matchup? Well, first of all, the word is try. They have not accomplished that yet. So, you know, like I said, that is a <laughs> crock. They're never going to take over the company. Uh, number two, um, these four women, they, they generally hate each other. They absolutely, Alicia cannot stand either one of them, and neither can Brittany. And the other two... Sassy Stephanie, she lives by her name. She's just so sassy and smart mouth. And Allison Kay is just a real wise ass, too. And um, I, I think it's going to be a knockout, dragout fight because when they did the um, war games at the end, you know, the three of them, they, they used handcuffs, and they handcuffed myself to the ring, to the cage, and then they did it to Brittany, and they did it to Alicia. And then they all pummeled on Mercedes and hurt Mercedes. And then they pull out a machete, and they're going to cut Mercedes' throat if somebody doesn't say they quit, they quit. So Brittany, the old soft heart of the three of them, you know, the the, 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 the girl next door screams, you know, I quit, I quit, I quit. And Alicia yells, I quit, you fucking bitches. And I was like, oh, my God. And I was like, this is crazy. And then um, – you know, everybody gets on handcuffed, and Alicia goes back in the locker room. She grabs the machete, and she's like, you want to ever use a machete? How about I cut you bitches? And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, security, please calm them down. So it's going to be interesting because they generally the, the, they generally hate one another, without a doubt, without a doubt. And, and that's a straight shoot. I'm talking about on a personal level and on a business level. They generally despise one another, genuinely. I would hate to be the referee of that match, controlling those four ladies. I mean, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a brawl, no doubt it about is, it. It is, it is, and I and I already spoke to the referees because a lot of times the referees are like, oh, but Amy Lee, they're girls. I can't. No, I'm sorry. In the ring, there is no gender. Okay, they hit you. You either disqualify them or knock them on their ass. You have my permission, and you have the permission of WSU management. You're not there to be a punching bag or be disrespected. So you know what? Either you control them or I will find referees who can do the job, okay? I can't go in the ring every show and be the enforcer, okay? It was a special stipulation there with the cage and having six women in the thing. It was just better for myself to be in there because I actually I'm bigger than all of them, and, and, and I've been against all of them, so I, I know their ways, their evil ways, and so to speak, and it was just easier, whereas a man would kind of like, you know, you know, well, it's girl, I don't... Like, the, the one referee, he's like, uh, Johnny, he's like, uh, I don't want to hit them, they're girls, and I'm like, oh, but if they hit you, it's okay. He goes, no, it's not okay. I go, let me explain something to you. You hit me, I'm going to hit you harder. You hit me back, I'm going to knock you out. Do you understand? I said, and that's how you got to start to be Johnny, because if you're too easy with these girls and they smell it, or you fear them because they are girls, and they smell it, they will shred you. They won't cut you. They will shred you. And they will walk all over you and take advantage of you. Happens, it, then I'm going to have to find another referee. Did you hear that, WSU referees? You have <laughs> the permission of the commissioner, Miss Primetime, to pretty much basically defend yourself. I mean, step up, step up to them. You're the referee. You're the high power it's your rules, uh-huh. or you, you're gonna disqualify them. You know, just right. it, it's okay. You got the power. You got the stripes. Um, exactly. Man up. I mean, I. A woman up for that matter. You're you're totally right, and and you know, like I have fans that are tweeting me and emailing me saying, "Oh, make it where fans bring weapons." Now we don't need that. We don't need that on this show. There's no reason for it. It's a tag match. It's an uncensored rule, which means they can brawl all over the building. I don't care. A don't ever touch a fan or you're fired. 
okay, and then you have to deal with me. B, the referee just makes sure they don't touch a fan, and he just counts one, two, three when they're done. That's it. So, you know, I kind of made it easier for these referees with this match, like like we had said. So, you know, these girls go to hit you. You, know, you can shove them, you know. It's not, nobody's going to think less of you. They hit you, hit them back. You know, they're not a bunch of uh, daffodil pickers. They're lady wrestlers. They can defend themselves, you know. So, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Maybe we should get you to come in and referee. <laughs> You know, I, I is I never wear for you anything in my life, but uh, I take it as consideration. There you go. <laughs> First time for everything. Yes, and uh, we got one more match left. It's the main event: it's championship versus championship. <laughs> it's for all the marbles. Yeah. It's for all the marbles. <laughs> Winner takes all, as I like to call it. On mm-hmm. one side, you have Jessica Havoc. She is the mm-hmm. spirit champion. On the other side. This woman is incredible. She is talented. Without a doubt, she is the best at what she does. She is the champion for a reason. She's been the champion for a couple of years and counting. But Jessica mm-hmm. Havoc has something to say about that. Uh, talk about this uh, title versus title. Havoc versus Martinez. Well, all the fans have been asking for it because Havoc is just, you know, she really has in, 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 really engulfed her um, and embraced her wrestling career. She she one day sat there and she just was staring down at the floor, and she turned around and just said, "I want to be fucking champion." And everybody just like looked at her, and I just kind of looked at her, and I said, "Well, if you want it bad enough, go for it." And she did. She beat May fair and square. She beat ODB fair and square. Nikki Rocks fair and square. So she went through Alicia fair and square. You know, she she went through on Brittany Savage, all of them. She went through all the girls, fair and square, and beat them. She beat them hands down, you know, some quicker than others, you know. But she did it. She earned a title shot. She earned a world champion title shot. Now, she's crazy. We all know that. But I like to say that Mercedes has more experience than what she does. Mercedes has been around for quite a few years. And, you know, you don't get acknowledged as Wrestler of the Year from PWI Magazine because you're chump change, okay? And you wrestle on the independents. You're not even on national television, and they're acknowledging you. That says something for her for her as a wrestler. So um, Jessica, I mean, in all fairness, Jessica has really improved, and she's really, you know, she's been hitting the gym, working on cardio and all, whereas Mercedes is just a bear on cardio, and we all know she can do the hour matches, the uh, you know, the 70-minute matches, and go mm-hmm. and go and go and keep on going, whereas a lot of girls like myself would just be like tongue hanging out after 20 minutes, like, oh, my God, just get me a beer already, will you? So she, um, she really has um, um, really, really has represented uh, WSU as a champion, absolutely incredible. I mean, this woman wrestles over, she's been to Japan, she's been to Australia, she's been to Mexico, whereas Jessica Havoc hasn't gone overseas yet. She hasn't really broadened her horizons yet. Maybe, you know, maybe after March 3rd, she she will. Who knows? But, you know, uh, Mercedes, Mercedes, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, doesn't have anything to prove to anyone. You know, maybe to herself, but not to the fans, not to the promotion, the promoters, the media, to anyone. She has nothing to prove. She's done it all. She's conquered it all. She's absolutely, like you said, she is the best of the best. She's absolutely incredible. She is one of the nicest, most sincere people. She's very private in her life, which she's entitled to, and I respect that, you know. Uh, whereas Jessica Havoc's out there all over the place telling everybody everything, you know, because she's, I think it, it, it's like watching, um, it, it's, it's like watching an adult, you might say, and, and, a, and a kid or a young adolescent. It's like, it's like uh, Jessica Havoc reminds me of Macaulay Coke in Home and Alone. She just goes berserk, you know what I'm saying? She just goes absolutely nuts with the media and stuff like that. Whereas Mercedes, you know, she just sits back and she lets her actions inside the ring speak for her. And she's generally a class act. So it's interesting because I know Havoc really wants this and Havoc has to give it all because if she loses, okay, she loses, she has to start all over again. And that's going to take at least another year to do so. Whereas Mercedes, 
Mercedes, like I said, she has nothing to prove. She's done Iron Woman matches. She's done cage matches. You know, she's wrestled Kong. She's wrestled me. She's wrestled um, uh, for almost a year. Her and Orsini went back and forth, kicking the shit out of one another. You know, everything she's been thrown at, she has accepted. She's given a trillion percent, and she's conquered it. So, I, I, you know, I'm personally going for Mercedes. I am personally, and I'm going because I'm going with the old veteran experience, knowledge, respectability, credibility. Whereas Havoc, to me, is still immature. She, she, she's getting out of that puppy stage. She's like that adolescent dog now. She, she's, not quite, she's not quite there yet, you know. She, she's close, but she's not quite there. You know, and and you know, who knows if 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 by some chance Havoc does win, and you know, she should be very proud of herself because she has really busted her butt, and she's gotten a lot of criticism where people have said in the locker room she don't deserve it, I deserve it over her. No, she deserves it because she, this girl here, and I don't know if you know this or not, but Jessica Havoc, in all fairness, came in as a tag team with um, Haley Hatred. Haley Hatred decided she wanted to do a singles career and went down to Mexico to wrestle and left Jessica Havoc high and dry. Jessica Havoc contacted WSU and spoke to Shauna McCafferty and asked him if she could come in in singles. And he was like, he was a little leery because she had done tag teams almost her entire career. So he gave her the opportunity. She came, she saw, and she conquered it. And she's been doing quite well in her singles match. And she brought in Allison Kay, who's from her area. And her and and she brought in, you know, and there was Sassy Stephanie, who was brought in actually by WSU. Um, so the three of them are from the same area. They come from the same wrestling dojo, and they travel together. So, you know, they kind of have, like, that little bondage, their little click thing, you know. So it, it's going to be very interesting. Um, I was very excited when, when WSU, because I kept saying to them, even before I retired, you got to let them go. you got to let them go at it. Uh, eventually, eventually. And then when they said I was commissioner, I looked them dead in the face, and I said, Sean Mick and um, the rest of the board, and I said, guess what? First thing I'm doing, I'm booking for five for the five-year anniversary of Mercedes versus Havoc. Old school versus new school. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a good match. It's definitely going to be a good match. Uh, for those who are just tuning in, in and out the room, uh, I am joined with WSU's commissioner, prime time, Amy Lee, right here on Triple Threat Wrestling Radio, and she just went through every single match that will be taking place at the WSU's five-year anniversary show, coming at you a little over two weeks from to, uh, this Saturday, March the 3rd. Check it out, WSUWrestling.com, for more details. Amy, thank you so much for another exciting interview. Oh, thank you for having me, baby. Thank you so much. You are, I've been doing this show for almost a year. April's <laughs> coming up, and you're like one of my all-time favorite guests. I'm just... I'm, uh, I'm just you gonna... know what? I always say to people, I talk better than I can wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you, you do both great. You do both great. You, you ah, look, thank you. you <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I said to Sean to Mick when I retired, and he asked me to be commissioner. I'm like, what do I get to do? He goes, you get to talk on a microphone. I go, my dream job. I get to talk. I get paid to talk. This is awesome. <laughs> that is... But thank you very much. I think it's great what you're doing. I think it's awesome that, you know, you allow people like myself and, you know, the independent workers come come out and, and talk on your show. I think it's absolutely tremendous, and I just, you know, I just wish you nothing but the best, and congratulations on your one-year anniversary. I think that is tremendous, you know, especially nowadays it's so hard because the media is just bombarded with everything. So congratulations, sweetie. Thank well deserved. You. Thank you so much, Amy. Best of success to you. Best of success to the WSU ladies. Best Thank success you. to WSU going forward. Like I said last time, you are welcome to call back anytime you see fit. I'm just. A- uh, and you're welcome anytime to a WSU wrestling show as my personal guest. I mean, and heck, I'll even get you backstage to interview some of the girls. Oh, I would love that. Uh, <laughs> you, I would love you that. You tell me when you want to come in, oh, and, we'll, I- and we'll, we'll set up the interviews for you. Thank you so much. You have a good night, right. Amy. You too, honey. Take care. Congratulations. Thank you. You have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was Prime Time. Amy Lee joining me from WSU. Check it out, WSU, five-year anniversary. 
coming to you on March the 3rd. Um, that interview went a lot longer than usual, but I can do that because, well, I'm the only person hosting the show. My co-host Jeff is not here. He's out of town. He's uh, He'll be back next Thursday. We'll be back to our regular one-hour time slot at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. I saw a walking man in, in, inside the room, outside the room. I see a couple of people inside the room. I don't know if they can hear the show or not, but uh, if you can, at least press one to type in the chat room. Let me know. Uh, I got one more interview left. Going to be joined with Amazing Maria. Uh, this will be my fourth interview of the evening. And uh, that should be a lot of fun. I'm going to go ahead and recap the WWE stuff from this past week. I wanted to recap SmackDown, but unfortunately I don't have the SmackDown paper in front of me. So I'm going to get to Monday Night Raw first since I have that in front of me. Of course, Shawn Michaels made an appearance on Monday Night Raw in San Diego, which is, happens to be Jeff's neck of the woods. And uh, I do want to point out, before I go any further, uh, if, if you missed the show, or if you missed the interviews especially, you will get to hear them again. They will be on replay. They're going to be on itmiradio.com. And they will be heard on chillingbroadcasting.com. They will be heard on the Ustream.tv as well. I will post all the interview links to all the ladies that's been interviewed. So, in case the good thing about this shows like this, let's record it. You can, so, in case you missed it, you get to hear it all over again. You get to hear the interviews or hear the whole show. Uh, and for those that's just been in and out the room, thank you for <clears throat> listening. So Shawn Michaels came in trying to convince Triple H or at least assumed that Triple H was going to face The Undertaker. Thought that mm, it's Triple H playing mind games with The Undertaker. So he came out, wanted Triple H to say it. To say it. One more match. Undertaker versus Triple H Part 3. Make it happen. Where well, Triple H wasn't joking. And you know he's all for jokes and stuff at this point of his career. But he wasn't joking. He said he's not going to face the Undertaker because he feels like Undertaker is a brand. Excuse me, Triple H, but Undertaker is at the end of his career. I think that WrestleMania 28 will be his last WrestleMania. He is 19 and 0. My thing is, he's going to get the record. He's going to go 20 and 0. And that's it. He is done. Whether it's against Triple H, whether it's against someone else. I think that WrestleMania 28 in Miami, Florida will be the last hoorah for the dead man. It will be his swan song. So, for you to say he's the brand, he's, he's still got it. Undertaker is at the end of his career. Triple H talks about that Undertaker, if you beat up Undertaker, this is the end of an era. The Attitude Era ended years ago, 10, 5, 10, 15 years ago. For people that think that WWE is going to recreate the Attitude Era, it's not happening. It's in a, it's in a class of its own. It's never going to be recreated. It's never, never, ever, ever. So I think at some point it will happen, but they the storylines is saying otherwise, and uh, WWE just teasing us. That's all what they're doing. We know it's going to happen. It's just a matter of Triple H giving in and making this match uh, happen. Uh, in case you haven't heard from last week, John Laranitis' job is secured. He is still the interim general manager and executive vice president of talent relations. And he made the match between John Cena versus Kane. There's another match that's going to be added to the card. It will be Beth Phoenix defending the Divas Championship against Tamina Snooker. 
the daughter of Jimmy Superfly Snooker. The daughter of Jimmy Superfly Snooker. That match has been added to the card. And uh, as I talked about a little bit earlier, in case you haven't heard, Wendy Orton has a concussion. He is out for this uh, Sunday Elimination Chamber match for the World Heavyweight title. Santino Moella will be taking his spot. Now, me personally, I thought Mark Henry should have been there, but it's not going to happen, I guess. Um, so the Elimination Chamber participants competed in uh, one-on-one matches. Uh, R-Truth defeated Dolph Ziggler. Uh, let's see, what else? Kofi Kingston, actually, Chris Jericho defeated Kofi Kingston. Uh, for those who may not know, <clears throat> Chris Jericho is going to be the last entry of the Wall Elimination Chamber. He defeated Chris Jericho. And a CM Punk versus the Miz. Didn't Punk beat Miz? Miz has been... Miz is... You know what Miz reminds me of? He reminds me of MVP. Remember MVP? Had that losing streak when he was in the WWE? You know, this is what's going on with the Miz. And people are just mad at the Miz. You know, the body rates and stuff. I don't know if that's true or not. But um, it looks to me that the Miz is in the doghouse of Vince McMahon. And he's going to have to work. He's going to have to work his way back in the WWE. Uh, in the top of the wagon. Top of the mountain, I should say. Um. Also... Kane, John Cena, Zack Ryder, and Eve. A lot is going on over there. Um, it started with, I think, Eve was in the ambulance. And um, John Cena tried to rescue Eve. And then Cena and Kane start going at it. And then Eve must have got caught up in the moment. Decided to give John Cena a smooch on the lips. And um, earlier that night on Raw. Earlier that night. Well, I got cut short. My final guest is calling in right now. Ladies and gentlemen, my final guest of this two-hour edition of Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. Coming to you from Kentucky. She is a... Um, you see her in WCCW in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky, and she was part of the Vixen show this past Sunday as well, Audible Victory. I am joined with Amazing Maria right here, right now. Hello, Maria. Hi. Hey, how you doing? I'm a little sick, so I apologize. My voice is a little raspy. Oh, that's okay. Um, I do appreciate you calling in, and ain't today your birthday? Yes. Well, um, uh, despite the circumstances that you are in, uh, I do wish you a happy birthday. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, uh, Maria, let's talk about the UWF Vixen show. I had uh, Kayla on. I had Burgundy on earlier tonight. Um, what was it like to be a part of an all-woman wrestling show? It's fantastic. It was the first time I'd ever been a part of anything like that. And it was amazing to be around such talented people, so many different women from different places. It was a really great thing. Uh, and you had a match against uh, Kayla, um, yes. and you had the Battle Warrior as well. You defeated Kayla, and Kayla's not too happy about the way you pick up the victory. Character was fun. <laughs> uh, what can I say? I mean, you know... I, I beat her, you know, one, two, three. I'm sure I'll get a rematch. She's wanting a rematch. I'll take her on any day. All right, and uh, well, I'm sure we're going to have that rematch at some point. Uh, so how did your wrestling career got started? Oh, wow. Um, actually, that's kind of funny. Um, the whole reason I got into wrestling was because of my 12-year-old daughter. I've always loved wrestling, and um, 
my daughter, she's a great big fan. She thinks she's going to be a big diva someday. She uh, just bugged me and bugged me and bugged me until I took a training class and just fell in love with it and haven't stopped. And uh, you are competing in at least two organizations here in Kentucky. You and WCCW, uh, and you're yes. part of a group called the Pretty Boys, even though you're the only yes. female in the group. How did that group got together? Well, um, the Pretty Boys, are, they're a fantastic tag team. Um, there's Ravishing Ronnie Roberts and Luscious L.J. Jameson. They're the tag team, of course. We have Precious Preston Douglas, who's our mouth, who's our manager. You know, whatever we need, he's there. And, of course, I'm the amazing one, the amazing Maria. Uh, I take on the women. You know, anybody that wants to come up against the pretty boys, we take them on. Considering that you call yourself Amazing Maria, what makes Maria so amazing? <laughs> um, I don't want to sound all cocky or anything like that, but... I'm a hard worker, so I just, I like, I like the name, the attitude, um, what is brought forth by being amazing, things that, you know, things that are amazing to people, things people like, just, but things that amaze them. I try to be that person. I want to, I want to shock people and I want to amaze people. I want people to think of me, you know, when, when they think of something's amazing, I want my name to follow that. And I like the fact that you have Kanye West featuring Young GC So Amazing as your theme song. That's very clever. Thank you. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I searched my music. I'd heard that music um, back when it first came out, and I always loved the song. And I never actually had paid attention to, you know, the, the entire words of it and everything. And when I was searching for my music, I went through a whole list of stuff. And... I kept, you know, some friends of mine, the Pretty Boys, of course, were helping me try to find my music and to pick out something, and I was like, you know, this is what I want. There's this song. It's by Kanye West, and I couldn't exactly remember the name of it, so we, I searched it, and it came up that the, the name of it is simply, you know, just amazing, so it fit perfect. I hear you got a big match coming up this Sunday. Um, you're going to be at USWF, and your opponent... Saturday. Yeah, I believe it's this Saturday, or USWF. Yeah. And you're going to be going up against one of the ladies that was part of that Vixen show. She is part of the OVW. Uh, her name is Alita Ortiz, uh, the Latin beast, as she calls herself. Uh, what's your thoughts on Alita Ortiz heading into this match on Saturday? She's a beast from the East. What can I say? Um, very well talented. Um, but you know what? She's coming to my hometown. I'm taking her on in my hometown. So, you know, I'm hoping to get the one, two, three on her, take her down. It's going to be a it's going to be a great match, a great showdown between the beast and the amazing one. But like I said, I've got hometown advantage, hometown people behind me. So, I'm going to pull this one off, maybe. Hey, you got the home crowd advantage, so you got that going for you. Uh. Yes, it's going to be my first time working in my hometown ever, so, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Never actually, you know, worked in my hometown where I actually live, so it's going to be pretty amazing. Uh, do you have any other scheduled matches, appearances you have coming up? Um, I work ev just, uh, almost every Saturday at WCCW in Lawrenceburg, and every Sunday in Georgetown, Kentucky at UWF. Great federation. I love working there. Um, I have to give a shout out to the UWF promoter and booker. They both have helped me in my career. I um, have not been this excited about my career as I have since I started working with those guys. So they truly are amazing. Shout out uh, to everybody. At a UWF especially. I've been a fan of them for quite a while now. Yes. For over a year at actually. And I moved back to Kentucky. And um, back in January. You had a match against uh, Pippi. And uh, you had a match. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, you had a match against Pippi. Um, 
And with the Vixen show now uh, over, uh, do you see yourself in the hunt for the uh, Vixen's championship, which is currently being held by Little Naughty? Yeah, Little Naughty's a great competitor. Um, I've watched her work. I've watched her work for probably about six months now. And, you know, in the future, why not? Um, I'm get some more training under my belt, get a little more knowledge. You know, I mean, I'm the amazing one. I'm ready to take on anyone and everyone at this point. If you can have a dream match against anyone, male or female, uh, what, what would it be? Who would your, uh, what would your dream match be? Who would your opponent be? Oh, wow, a dream match. Um, past or present? Past or present. I would have to say Lita. She was fantastic, a phenomenal worker. Um, her and the Hardy Boys, they're kind of role models for me and my daughter as well. Um, she's the whole reason why I got into watching women's wrestling. I used to watch you know, men's wrestling all the time. But when Lita came out, her and Trish Stratus had matches, and they would tear each other apart. And I absolutely loved it. And I would, I would love to have a match with her. That that would be a real good match. The Amazing One versus um, Lita. And she definitely set the bar high for, for female yeah. wrestlers. She she wasn't your, your typical female wrestler. She she did things that you see guys do. She's on the top rope doing high flying maneuvers. I mean her and the Hardys, they were they were very popular and uh, they made their mark in the WWE uh, going forward. Um, so why don't you go ahead and, uh, tell the listeners, um, how they can get in touch with you. Go ahead and, uh, tell them your Facebook links and your Twitter links. Okay. Anybody that wants to get in touch with me, they can reach me or follow me on Twitter at Amazing Maria. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I have a fan page, Amazing Maria at Facebook.com. Um, and... You can see me, like I said, on Saturdays, uh, most Saturdays and Sundays in Georgetown, Kentucky, or Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. Um, I also work sometimes out of Tennessee. Uh, we usually do a show once a month in Oneida for OWA, where the pretty boys are, you know, they also go to, I'm sorry, I'm sick, excuse me. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. The pretty boys also work there in Oneida, Tennessee. Actually, we're coming up. Um, the weekend of the the first weekend here in March, we're getting ready to do all night at Tennessee. So it's a great show. Um, hope everybody comes out and sees the Lawrenceburg shows, the UWF shows in Georgetown. Fantastic places to be. I've been watching you since I moved out to Kentucky, and uh, you got yourself an amazing fan in me. And it was great meeting you at the Vixen show. You, you're very nice. You're sweet. You're down to earth. Uh, and for those who are just tuning in, uh, this is Triple Threat Wrestling Radio right here on itmiradio.com. And I'm joined with my fourth and final guest of the evening, Amazing Maria. You can catch her on Saturday nights at WCCW over at Lawnsburg, Kentucky. And you can catch her on Sundays at United Wrestling Federation over at Georgetown, Kentucky. Check out the amazing one. And check out the pretty boys over at the Lawrenceburg. Um, what would your advice be to anyone that wants to get into uh, wrestling? Never give up. It's a hard business. And if you're a female, it's harder for the females than it is for the males. But if it's your dream, take it. You grab a hold of it and you take it with everything you've got. And you put everything you have into it. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it because it's an amazing thing. It's, it, wrestling is fantastic. I love it. You know, get into it. If you get into it, be passionate about it and have fun with it. If you don't have fun with it, then what's the point, you know? Well said. And uh, this is a question I ask a lot of uh, female wrestlers. What's your thoughts on the Divas and the Knockouts? 
or the current I'm sorry, my thoughts. What's, what's your thoughts on the current divas and the current knockouts honestly i would take the tna knockouts over the divas any day well put the girls yes the the knockout girls i mean they work they get out there you know and it's not about how pretty or how you know they just they just get out there and they work and they wrestle and and they put on great shows and they're fantastic to watch and i would take the knockouts over the divas any day you know, people are just don't appear to be taking the Divas seriously like it once was with Trish and Lita. Uh, all I know is they do have Beth Phoenix, they do have Natalia, and they do have Karma now that she's a, she's a mom now. She's got her a child, and she should be coming out eventually. But the knockouts are on the wall right now. It's not only that, but they have the higher ratings of the uh, impact shows and the pay-per-views so uh a lot of people just pretty much been saying knockouts as far as females is concerned so i mean divas they got some people but they just they, don't they got get workers they, do. they got they workers do. but they got ladies that get out there and they work and stuff but you know the knockouts they just they they raise that bar and they come out there they just don't the, the divas they just don't get a lot of air time and that, that's no. just what it all boils down to. I mean, the guys get all the time they want, but the females, they only get two, three minutes. And come on, you being a wrestler, you need more than two, three minutes to to get yourself out there, whether it's a match or whether it's a promo. So uh, exactly. Um. So Maria, and um, for those who, it is her birthday today. So if you are a friend. Of Maria on her Facebook wish her a happy birthday I'll definitely make sure I'll do that as well and she's calling in under the weather and I do appreciate you uh, calling in under the circumstances that you are in I wish you had a better outcome of your birthday but I again I do appreciate you calling in on the show well thank you I appreciate you asking me to call in it's fantastic I love talking to the people and I I greatly appreciate people who recognize the things that we do. Well said. Now, before I let you go, Maria, and you can sleep and uh, get better soon in time for Saturday's match against Alita Ortiz, before I let you go, I ask our guests to do this. It's like a station ID. It's a voice drop. All you have to do is say your name. And right after you say your name, you say you are listening to Triple Threat Wrestling Radio I will count to three. You go ahead and say it. Okay. All right. One, two, three. I'm Amazing Maria, and I'm listening to Triple Threat Radio. Let's try that again. That's Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. Okay. All right. Hold on. Okay. <coughs> okay. All right. One, two, three. I am Amazing Maria, and I am listening to Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time, Maria. You get well soon. You have a, a happy birthday. Um, good luck in your match in your hometown of Ballsdown, Kentucky, against Alita Ortiz. Best of success goes out to you and UWF, WCW, and other organizations you work for. Uh, do you have any final words? I just want to say thank you to all the fans that come out, come out and watch the shows. If you guys have a dream, go out and take it. I'm looking forward to seeing you wrestle more now that I'm back in Kentucky. And uh, you have a good night, and thank you once again. Thank you, you too. All right, bye-bye. Bye. That was my fourth and final guest of the evening, Amazing Maria. And I want to talk to Jen real quick, who's in the chat room. Uh, this show is being recorded. Uh, so in case if you miss any part of the show, it will be on the replays on itmradio.com. Hopefully within the next couple of days. But I have this recorded on my Sam Broadcaster. I have this recorded on Ustream.tv. 
So I will be posting the Ustream links in the Facebook right after this show so that Maria can post her post it on her pages and Burgundy can post her interview on on her pages as well and Kayla Marie Stro and um Primetime Amy Lee will have her interview posted as well. Um so yeah I just I did it. Four interviews and nearly two hours. I wanna thank all the ladies for calling in. I wanna thank Burgundy Kayla Marie Stro, Primetime Amy Lee, and Amazing Maria. All four ladies came through tonight on this special two-hour edition of tr a Triple Threat Western Radio. And by the way, and by the way, next week, I will be joined with the Latin Beast, Alita Ortiz. She will be joining me next Thursday. My co-host, Jeff, will be back next week as well. So, uh... Tune in every Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Central, over at itmiradio.com. And if you missed the Jesse Bell Smothers interview I did at the UWF show, you can check it out on youtube.com backslash user backslash TTW Radio. Check out the Jesse Bell Smothers interview I did. And I also did an interview with Cheyenne Sexton and Juan Sexton as well. So, if you think about it, Cheyenne, Jesse, uh, Burgundy, that's four vixens from UWF I interview in over a week. That's that's good stuff. And I'm looking forward to uh, checking out the UWF show. I have a better chance going there than uh, WCCW because I do another show on Saturday nights right around the time the WCCW show starts. So... I have a better chance of seeing that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and recap the Against All Odds pay-per-view. I missed the pay-per-view because I was at the Vixen show. So I'm just going to go ahead and go over all these matches here. Zima Iman defeated Jesse Sorcine. Uh, that Apparently Jesse has a serious injury and he's recovering. We wish Jesse a speedy recovery. Uh, Zima Ion is now the number one contender for the X Division title. Then you have Robbie E defeated Shannon Moore. Uh, Robbie E retained the TNA TV title. Gail Kim defeated Tara t to retain the Knockouts Championship. And on tonight's episode of impact that's going to be a 10 female match to determine who's the new number one contender and how about this new tag team champions Samoa Joe and Magnus defeated Clemson and Mac Morgan which I'm assuming that Matt Morgan was the one got pinned because they want to keep Clemson's undefeated streak for some odd reason Austin Aries defeated Alex Shelley to retain the uh, X Division title Kazarian defeated AJ Styles Gunner defeated Garrett Bischoff and Bobby Roode defeated Bully Ray, James Thorne, Jeff Hardy to retain the TNA Heavyweight Championship. And that's pretty much all the impact update I got. <laughs> because coming up, I'm going to make my predictions for the Elimination Chamber uh, pay-per-view this coming Sunday night. Uh, so far, there's only four matches scheduled. Um, here's what we here's what we know: that Wendy Orton is injured. He has a concussion. He will not be in the Elimination Chamber pay per view. He is out, he's been out, which I think is a smart move. You keep one of your top superstars healthy in time for WrestleMania, Elimination Chamber. Not that big of a deal. Keep him healthy for WrestleMania. So, Santino Morella to replace him, I would have preferred Mark Henry. But Mark Henry, with the storyline, he's suspended. So, I guess that's all they can think of. The Santino Morella, I don't know. He, he may do something. But I think he's going to be the first to be eliminated inside the uh, chamber. 
Uh, Santino will have his funny moments. He'll probably put a cobra on somebody. But uh, I think he's going to be the first to be eliminated. I'm just, just, let's just keep it real. It's one thing for Santino Moella to be one of the final two of last year's Royal Rumble. But for him to be in a World Heavyweight Championship match is just laughable. He's a goofy, hilarious guy. I like Santino Moella. He's a goofy, he's a funny, entertaining guy. And look, I don't blame him for making the most out of this opportunity. Because he may never get another World Heavyweight Championship match ever again in his life, in his WWE career. So you might as well make the most of it. You might as well make the most of it. And some news from earlier. WrestleMania is coming to New Jersey. Um, a report from this past week. John Cena, The Walk, and Triple H had a press conference right near the MetLife Stadium, home of the New York Football Jets. And home of the Super Bowl champions, New York Giants. Apparently, WWE is continuing the theme of a football field. They plan in, they're doing WrestleMania in football places. They were at the Georgia Dome last year, home of the Atlanta Falcons. They're going to be at Sunlight Stadium, which will be home of the Miami Dolphins. Now they're going to be at the MetLife Stadium, home of the Giants and the Jets. Um, so there you go. <laughs> and I get a big laugh out of Jan and she done left. Regardless of how many listeners I had or how many listeners I didn't have, I had a lot of fun tonight. I had a lot of fun. For all four ladies, three of them from Kentucky. Great stuff. It's amazing. Literally amazing. Um, it's just great. And don't forget, chilling with Jeff and Kenny C. Saturdays, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central. Check it out if you want to listen to things other than wrestling. Uh, we talk entertainment news. We talk celebrities. We do trivia. We do a lot of fun stuff over there. So please, by all means, please, pretty please, check it out. You'll love it. You'll have fun with it. You'll enjoy it. Be a lot of great stuff, I tell you. I had a busy week, and I'm having a lot of great. I'm having a lot of fun. Having a lot of fun. And Amy Lee, <laughs> the WSU commissioner, invited me to be at a WSU show. They do their shows over in New Jersey and New York, and I live here in Country Bumpkin, Kentucky. So I'm, I'm going to need two things to happen. I'm going to need a lot of money, and I'm going to need to be off of work for a whole weekend just so I can witness it. And you heard it. This is live. This is recorded. She says she'd give me VIP treatment, obviously. <laughs> I love it. Great stuff. And I appreciate Amy Lee going over all the matches, giving me some insight, giving me a lot of history between the ladies. Uh, it was It was great. So all these ladies have my support. They have my support. So keep an eye on it. Stay tuned. And uh, I will be at my friend Andrew's house to watch the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. And now that we are down to the last seven minutes, let's go ahead and make my pay-per-view predictions. On with this. On with this. Divas Championship on the line. Beth Phoenix the champion. Tamina Snuka the challenger. What an interesting route for Tamina Snuka. We all know her 
as the daughter of Jimmy Superfly Schnucker. We all know her as the valet of the Usos. We all know her from having a relationship with Santina Marella. How crazy would that be if Tamina and Santina walked out as champions and then become a power couple again? You never know. It's gonna be it's gonna probably be probably WWE's best Divas match in the pay per view all year. And we're only just a month and a half into the uh, 2012. I'm going to go with Beth Phoenix to retain the championship. Now she said and she claimed to beat everybody. She's beating Alicia Fox, Kelly Kelly, and Eve. She's dominated them. But she hasn't faced Tamina and she hasn't faced Karma. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to go with Beth Phoenix to retain the championship. On to John Cena versus Kane. Inside the uh, in an ambulance match. Zack Ryder will be out of the way. And hopefully Eve, for her sake, will be out of the way. Cena and Kane, probably the last mountain it'll be the last mountain for Cena to climb before he goes on to face The Rock now The Rock is right now promoting his movie Journey 2 which just came out last week John Cena versus Kane at Royal Rumble I picked Cena to win but that match ended in a double count out I'm gonna go with John Cena again and Cena will take a beating from Kane, no doubt about it. Did you not see what Kane did to Zack Ryder as a uh, wall went off the air? Zack Ryder was sitting on a wheelchair, and then he just he just pulled the wheelchair off the stage. Hasn't Zack Ryder suffered enough? He gets choke slammed outside the he, outside. He gets choke slammed through a stage. He gets tombstoned at the Royal Rumble. And now he gets takes a bad landing sitting on the wheelchair. It's not a good look. It is not a good look at all. Oh, there are you people showing up. <laughs> Andrew is here. Rocket Man is here. I see Beth will win at WrestleMania, then at WrestleMania 28 versus Karma. Yeah, you missed nearly an hour and 57 minutes, Andrew, but you're here nonetheless. I'm going to pick John Cena to defeat Kane, and then it's on to facing The Rock at WrestleMania. Remember, this is, w this is the last pay-per-view for the WWE before WrestleMania, because there is no pay per view in March. And Andrew said he was at. He was at Jonathan's basketball game. Okay. Um. So yeah, I'm picking Cena. I'm picking Beth Phoenix, and I'm picking John Cena. Now on to the SmackDown Elimination Chamber match. Uh, in case you haven't heard. In case you haven't heard, Randy Orton is out. Santino Moella in. He joins Ray Barrett, Cody Rhodes, Big Show, Great Khali, and World Heavyweight Champion Daniel Bryan. I said I want to see Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus at the WrestleMania this year since their match from last year didn't make the telecast. So only because of that, I'm going to go with Daniel Bryan to pull out yet another miracle. I'm telling you, this dude is like Tim Tebow. He just finds a way to win. I'm going with Daniel Bryan to win the SmackDown Elimination Chamber. And as for the Raw Elimination Chamber, you got Punk, you have Truth, Miz, Ziggler, Jericho, and Kofi Kingston. 
I'm gonna go with. I thought about going with. Uh, I thought about going with Chris Jericho, and we and I think we all know it's gonna be Jericho versus Punk. So as long as one of them has the championship heading into WrestleMania, then it's all good. I'm gonna go with. I thought about going with Jericho, then I wanted to go with CM Punk. I say at least one of the championships going to change hands, at least. So I'm going to go with Chris Jericho to become the new World Heavyweight Champion. So here are my picks and recap. Jericho, Brian, Cena, and Phoenix. All my picks to win at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view this Sunday night. I want to thank Burgundy, Kayla Marie Stroh, Primetime Amy Lee, and Amazing Maria for calling in. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Remember, Triple Threat Western Radio will be back at its regular time slot 8 o'clock p.m., 1 hour, 8 to 9. Jeff will be back on next Saturday. I mean, next Thursday, excuse me. He'll be back. He will be back next uh, uh, Thursday, and he'll be back next Saturday. He's not going to be on chilling this Saturday. It's going to be Law and myself. So I want to thank everybody for listening tonight. Uh, don't forget, Chilling with Jeff and Kenny C, Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Pacific. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. I'll see you on Chilling with Jeff and Kenny C, this Saturday night, one hour. And I'll see you back at his regular start time, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Central. Over at Triple Threat Western Radio. You can listen to this and many more on chillinbroadcasting.com. You all have a good night. I'm Kenny C. signing off. Later.